I'm realizing that I am probably entering a phase of this keto and metabolic health journey that is going to be more difficult than I originally anticipated. I shared in our last video or our last vlog the process of going down on this most recent taper of my antipsychotic from 40 milligrams to 20 milligrams, which felt like a really, really kind of monumental drop in terms of dropping down to a dose that is not really considered a therapeutic dose of lorazodone for schizophrenia. I wanted to kind of show what the withdrawal experience was like because I had experienced that with my previous taper. And so I wanted to kind of take you through that process, but I didn't really experience much at all. There was some nausea, a headache. I got kind of sweaty, maybe a little bit more anxious, but it wasn't too bad. And I moved through it or that, what I thought it was pretty quickly. And so I brought you with me through probably almost the first week of that taper and kind of came to the conclusion that okay, that was super easy, on to the next, we're stable at 20 milligrams. But about almost two weeks later, maybe a week and a half later, I ran a really tough race and I haven't really pushed myself, well, I haven't, I haven't ran a race in this duration of this keto journey. And so it was pushing my body more than it was used to. And I started to feel after that race, kind of really, really unwell. I actually, before the race, was already kind of complaining about a little bit of nausea, but that just kind of seemed to amplify after the race and in the days afterward. And I began to feel, I'm not even really sure how to describe it other than just that things were really feeling off. And this felt really akin to how I felt in the past when I'm slipping into psychosis or falling into psychosis. And also this kind of familiar feeling of feeling unwell and falling into psychosis was coupled with kind of fighting more with Rob and falling more into patterns of conflict that I know were really consistent with how I engage with him when I'm unwell. And so I found myself experiencing this general sense of unwellness I found myself in more conflict with Rob that felt very similar to how it does when I'm unwell. And I started to get pretty worried. I realized though that I was not really experiencing, you know, hallucinations or not really even what I would consider delusional thinking. I was feeling off and I was feeling like I wasn't really able to think clearly. You know, I was trying to explain things to my kids and I couldn't find the right words. I was not feeling very articulate and my brain just felt like kind of a mess. But, I, you know, I wasn't, again, experiencing hallucinations or really even like paranoia or, you know, stuff, the hallmark symptoms of being in psychosis. And so I kind of thought, well, no, this, this isn't really the exact same as it's been when I go into psychosis before. And I started to also pick up on things like I was feeling the nausea again and I had a headache and stuff. And I started to wonder if this was more withdrawal and just kind of more later onset withdrawal. Back a year ago, when I ended up in the hospital, I hadn't touched my meds at all. I was still taking my medication as prescribed. Nothing had changed in that regard the way it typically had when I was hospitalized in the past. But what I think might have precipitated that psychotic episode was that I was training for a marathon at that time. And so my body was under this increased amount of stress and was likely metabolizing my medication in a different way. Or even just my metabolic health was probably changing. I had more insight into stuff that was going on like that probably too at the time that precipitated a psychotic episode. And so I was kind of wondering if this really intense race that I did about a week and a half after tapering changed the way my body metabolized the remaining medications that were in my body. And this is completely speculative. I don't know, but it got me thinking. So currently I'm about two and a half weeks post going down for the first time to 20 milligrams of loracidone, my antipsychotic. And yeah, I'm still kind of struggling with this feeling of my brain being off, um, feeling just kind of generally unwell. And I spoke with Nicole Laurent, my keto coach, about this. And she kind of 
I guess, validated or, you know, made me feel a bit better about that experience because she pointed out that, you know, my brain became dependent on this substance, the antipsychotic that I was taking. And maybe it compensated in different ways with the addition of that substance. And when you take it away, it's kind of recalibrating how it needs to function. And so my brain is kind of in a state of unwellness where it's trying to figure out how to recalibrate and get back to a normal state. And so it felt good that there was kind of an explanation for why I'm feeling this general sense of brain unwellness and why I'm foggy and not feeling the way I have been feeling, you know, for the past five months. So I'm hoping that I will be able to just kind of push through the last bit of this. It is getting, I think, maybe a bit better. Um, I am increasing my functioning slowly day by day. And yeah, I am optimistic that this withdrawal will ease up soon, hopefully. But there was a psychiatrist who actually reached out to us with concerns about the way I've been tapering my medication and feeling like it might be too much too quickly. And he is actually a specialist in deprescribing, so weaning or tapering off of psychiatric medications, including antipsychotics. So he shared with me this graph that kind of showed, you know, how much lorazodone specifically affects the brain um, based on what kind of percentage. I wasn't great at following with this, the exactitudes of this, but basically it was a curve that showed that the last bits of the taper are going to be the hardest because they have the most prominent drop of effect on the brain. But basically bringing my awareness to the fact that these last increments of tapering are probably going to be the most difficult. And so I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to just kind of ride out this withdrawal that I'm experiencing currently at 20 milligrams. But, you know, I was planning because my psychiatrist had given me the okay and had said, yeah, you can go down to nothing on, I think, July 16th, which is like eight weeks after I went down to 20. But I think through this, I'm quickly learning that I don't think a lot of psychiatrists are really experts or well-versed in the concept of deprescribing. Unfortunately, it's kind of part of our psychiatric model of care to put people on psychiatric medication and then kind of leave them on it for the rest of their lives, especially for things like schizophrenia or schizoaffective disorder, where it's been believed for a long time that people need to be on this medication long term for the rest of their life. Yeah, I don't want to throw my psychiatrist under the bus because he's well-meaning and he is trying to support me through this process and my goal of getting off medication, but not perhaps the most knowledgeable in terms of understanding the safest or best way to do that. And so this, this psychiatrist who reached out to me shared some resources, which I'm going to dig into. Nicole shared some resources, which I'm going to dig into as well. She shared with me some books that she recommended taking a peek at and recommended anyone else who is looking to advocate for themselves with this deprescribing realm with their care team who maybe don't know as much about it, which I will link to in the description below those books that she recommended. But basically where I'm at is, yeah, kind of trying to reevaluate how I want to approach the next taper. Um, so that could look like maybe cutting my pills in half so that it's just a 10 milligram drop, but that might even be too much. And so I've been talking about how there are pharmacies called compounding pharmacies, which can take your medication, break them down. I think they put it into liquid format and they're able to give you a very specific tapered dose or titrated dose that is not offered in pill format um, so that you can do a slower, more intentional taper. And so perhaps going down by five milligrams at a time or, yeah, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do that yet. I am going to look more into the body of research that exists on deprescribing. Unfortunately, an element of this is that most of the science or evidence on deprescribing from antipsychotics is not on people who are on a ketogenic diet or who are using metabolic therapies to treat and manage their mental illness. And so unsure of 
if that could play a protective factor in terms of being able to get off these medications quicker, I don't know. And so that's kind of why I'm giving you this update on where I'm at in terms of this element of deprescribing through this keto and metabolic health project. And yeah, kind of giving you some insight into where I'm going from here in the next few months. So the title of this video was I spoke too soon because, you know, I went a week after tapering and thought, hey, that went really well. But, you know, this, this psychiatrist who reached out to me also let me know that, you know, withdrawal could take place as late as, you know, a couple months after going down on a medication. So I think I'm understanding that this is a much bigger, perhaps more nuanced, perhaps more challenging topic than I originally thought it was going to be. And I think it's really worth sharing this experience and sharing any setbacks I experience and any learnings I have along the way with you all as well, because I think it's probably something that a lot of other people who are interested in following a similar path of using ketogenic therapies to perhaps reduce their medication may need to understand as well. Now, I want to be very mindful of the fact that I am talking about adjusting medications and going down or even off of medications. And I want to just reiterate once again, that this really needs to be done under collaboration with your care team, with your prescribing physician, psychiatrist. Now, you know, that said, I did share that my psychiatrist doesn't really know a lot about some of the challenges that can come about with deprescribing. And so I guess it is also important to understand that while yes, you do need to be working closely with your psychiatrist, there is an element of self-advocacy that needs to take place with these sorts of things as well. Take it upon yourself to dig into the research, to dig into, you know, resources out there about this so that you can be as knowledgeable yourself as possible and showing up for the discussion with your care team. So hoping I move out of this withdrawal difficulty soon, but I will keep you updated and bring you along as that progresses. Thank you so much for watching this video. And as always, wishing you and your loved ones good health. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.